Yo, what's up guys, Strats here, it's 2am and I'm making a tutorial, why not? Um, anyway, uh, first of all I'd like to say part 3 of the background tutorial will be out soon, just be patient, wait for that. Um, also, reason for no videos, uh, pretty simple. Um, after the Easter holidays, I went straight back into college and started my main project. I've been working on that a lot, so it's kind of getting in the way of things, but that will soon be over and back to normal videos, so let's get one done now. Uh, it's basically a tutorial um, on how to do something like this. Uh, wait, uh, as you can see on my new background, it's like this kind of shadow effect, or you could use this for example, this line here. Um, basically, giving it this nice indented effect, and uh, really simple, um, but good once you know how to do it, and it looks really clean. Just going to use this random white canvas as my. Um, example area so I'm just gonna make this grey obviously use whatever colors you are feeling to use I'm gonna use these greys make it gradient just pull it out and I'm gonna just make that a bit darker oh there's another little tip in this um I might have might have said this before even if I haven't it's worth mentioning again um, as you can see, when you do gradients uh, and you kind of edit the gradient, make it darker or something, it will sometimes have these lines. I'm not sure if you can see them, but they're kind of there. Sometimes they get really bad. Um, there's a way to fix this. Uh, go to filter. Oh, wait. Make sure <laughs> layer selected. Filter, brush strokes, spatter. I might have shown this. I'm not sure if I did, but it's helpful anyway. Um, you want to make sure your spray radius is about 15. Smoothness is all the way down. Sounds stupid, but it works as you can see. Um, they might still be there a bit but if you pull this up more it makes it more grainier but it does get rid of it it's up to you what you want to do but it's a great way of making it a lot cleaner anyhow let's carry on to where we were basically um, you can do this with any shape really um, I'm gonna do it with a swervy thing with the pen tool just to make it I don't know a bit different to the background uh, just random swerves, uh, something like that. Right, um, I don't like that. <laughs> Try that again. And even if I don't like it this time, I'm going to keep it because it's really only an example. As I said, you can do whatever shape or just do the normal rectangle like mine in the background, or you can use a shape. That's not going to work, is it? Pen tool failure. Well, I was okay with the pencil now I'm just proving to be wrong there we go that'll do I don't really care um, so you've got a shape uh, make a new layer gonna fill path and press it press ok uh, it doesn't really matter what color you're gonna be changing that anyway All right so now you've got this um, what I want to do I want to make it the same kind of color as the background so I'm gonna in fact I'm going to do this, I'm going to hold down command click the little thumbnail so it selects it all go to the back layer click command C or control C whatever and I'm going to click V, uh, control V or command V and although you can't see it, it's right there um, if I invert it you'll be able to see it there basically I've just made it the same colour so it fills in with the background, if I move it up here you can see it kind of comes out, that's really cool I like disappears anyway go to effects stroke now um, you can either use a darker color or a light color for the stroke I'm gonna use a lighter one uh, you can either do it like this uh, make it fully white or fully black if you're doing dark or light and go to overlay or soft light whichever both uh, kind of give it a lighter effect um, or you could just do it like this so when something's behind it it won't be see-through uh, I'm just gonna do it like this it's up to you. Um, then you want to go to inner shadow. As you can see, we've kind of got this inner thing already. Now you can either have the um, angle of the light actually shown, so it's only on like one side. But um, sometimes you might want to bring it all the way up. So if you want to do that, bring the distance all the way down. In fact, a good a good number to put it on is two, so it kind of gives it an all-round feel, but it still gives it a bit of an angle as well. Um, and there we go. So now we've got the indent. 
Um, I'm also I will also show you how to put something inside if you don't know how to do that. Um, might as well do that when I'm here. Also, if you want, you can put a drop shadow on this as well. Um, it kind of doesn't make sense if you're trying to make it indentive, but it still looks okay. Uh, still, still gets a pretty nice effect. Um, light, lighter looks best. But uh, yeah. Um, right. So now, if you wanted to put something on the inside, I'm just going to go to text. If this lets me select colors, but no, it doesn't want to. There we go. All right. So I'm just going to put strats, strats. I'm just going to make this kind of not as bold. Uh, that don't look right at all. Fuck that. Um, I'll just put strats designs. Oh god. I'm going to do that. Tilt it upwards. It's just going to make a kind of quick pattern in here, basically. Uh, I'll, make, I'll do this again, but I'll make this one lighter so it's not as bold. Bring that up there. Rasterize. Now you just kind of want to merge them together and just basically duplicate them a whole load of times and keep merging them, and you'll kind of just get a bigger pattern as it goes along. Uh, do that again, and as you can see, you're just duplicating, making it bigger, duplicating. Uh, pretty simple, really. I'm not going accurate with this, usually I'd make it as it stands out in a pattern, but you know, do what you got to do. <clears throat> this is very, not not the most entertaining thing, but you know, if you want the effect, that's what you got to do, that will do. When it, it kind kind of gets these puzzle bits, and you kind of need to make it fill in where there's gaps like that. Um, yeah, merge that all together. My Photoshop is being very slow. I've had it open all day and been doing a load of stuff on it, so it kind of it gets slower as you put more files, open more files in it. And I think I've got quite a few open, so that'll be why. But just about done now. Oh, that'll do. There's a little gap. In fact, I could probably fill that in. No, I'm not going to bother. I'm going to leave it. Right, now you want to go to Alt. Go between these two layers, the shape and the text. you just done all the pattern, whatever. And there you go. It's basically masked it, so it's inside. If I can move that over, that gap won't show. That might be better. Don't know why I'm bothering so much, but don't worry. Right, that'll do. And then you want to go to normal and click on overlay. Um, you can make the opacity a bit smaller. And then we kind of got a pattern in, inside there. Um, invert it, make it dark, whatever you want to do. Um, that would look kind of good with their like tribal pattern inside, I don't know. But uh, that's pretty much it on there. So thanks a lot for watching. I hope this helped. Very simple, as you can see. A lot of people probably knew how to do it, but it's very clean, nice to know, and um, thanks for watching. Uh, part 3 of the background, absolutely.